you know, I think everybody's, everybody's present. Good. I think we will start. Hereby, I open this academic ceremony in which Mr. Xinwei Hong will defend his academic thesis entitled Targeting Bile Salt FGF 19 Signaling, Promising Therapeutic Strategy to Promote Liver Regeneration and Improve Intestinal Failure. May I invite you, Mr. Chung, to present a summary of your studies and the conclusions of your thesis in the next 50 minutes. And I'd like to give you the word. The Prorector, the members of Corner, their family, friends, and audience. In the coming 15 minutes, I will briefly introduce my series. The topic of my series is targeting Basalt FGF19 signaling, promoting therapeutic strategies to promote liver regeneration and improve intestinal failure. The presentation is organized as follows. First, I will introduce the background. Then I will discuss three parts of my series. Finally, I will give the concurrence. Corrector cancer is the third most common cancer worldwide. One third of these patients develop colorectal liver mortalities. Partial liver resection is the only curative approach for this tumor. From the picture, we can see that the right part of the liver is tumorous, is resected during operation. The left part of the liver is reserved, which is called the future liver remnant. Small future liver remnant volume is correlated with high post-operative mobility and mortality. Periphyseal count carcinoma is another liver tumor type. The main feature of this tumor is the impaired bile flow because of the uh, tumor mass in the bile duct. And this can lead to the accumulation of bilirubin in blood and the accumulation of toxic bile salt in the liver. And this can lead to the high post-operative mobility and mortality. There are two preoperative interventions that are in, in employed when the process of liver regeneration is disturbed by the toxic effects of basalt uh, accumulation and uh, insufficient future liver remnant volume. Preoperative biliary drainage is one procedure. The biliary drainage can restore the bowel flow, relieve the hepatic basalt overload and decrease the hepatotoxicity. Percutaneous transhepatic bilirubin drainage and endoscopic bilirubin drainage are the two main methods for the drainage. Another procedure is portal vein embolization. It can induce the compensatory hypertrophy of the non embolized segments and increase the future liver remnant volumes. Therefore, the portal vein embolization allows a safer liver resection. That's what are signaling molecules that can stimulate the liver growth in surgical settings, for example, after partial liver resection and uh, non-surgical settings for example, after feeding basalt. Basalt undergo the intrahepatic circulation. Basalt are synthesized in the liver and secreted into the small intestine. In the idiom, 95% of basalt are reabsorbed by the small intestine and go back to the liver through the portal vein, completing the intrahepatic circulation. The intrahepatic circulation is disturbed in the case of 
paraphilia carcinoma, or in case of the lack of inter intestinal continuity. For example, patients with temporary double jejunal enterostomy, these patients have outflow of sulcus enteric and uh, dysregulated basalt uh, synthesis. They can develop intestinal failure and uh, intestinal failure associated liver disease. Next, the basalt FXRFGF19 axis. This axis controls basalt uh, synthesis. In the idiom, basalt are reabsorbed by the intracytes, bent and activate their uh, receptor FXR. OCA is a FXR agonist. Activation of FXR can stimulate the release of FGF19 into the portal vein. In the liver, FGF19 can bind with the receptor FGFR4 and inhibit the basalt synthesis by repressing the expression of CYP7A1. C4 is a blood marker of basalt synthesis. Proper functioning of this axis is important to maintain the basalt level at a safe, uh, at a safe level and prevent basalt synthesis. If this axis is blocked, it can lead to the uncontrolled basalt synthesis. In part one, we assessed uh, the effect and route of preoperative berry drainage in perihelial count carcinoma. This is a systematic review of systematic reviews. The research question of this study is what are the effects and optimal route of preoperative uh, biliary drainage in perihelial count carcinoma. We found that 10 of 11 systematic reviews had high risk of bias. When comparing patients with drainage to patients without drainage, we found a similar post-operative uh, mortality between two groups and uh, increased post-operative major mobility in simple selected patients who received drainage only based on the, uh, the prevalence of uh, jaundice. When comparing patients with PTBD to patients with EBD, we found the similar post-operative mortality between two groups. The higher drainage related mobility in the EBD group was post-operative long-term survival in the PTBD group. In part two, we studied the the role of basalt signaling in PVE induced liver growth. We used a portal vein embolization reactor model. In this model, 75% of total liver volume is embolized. In the right figure, we can see the X axis is the time after PVE. The Y axis is the liver volume increase after PVE. OCA is FXR agonist, which activated the basalt FGF19 axis. At three days after PVE, the, we found, uh, uh, in a previous study, we found that at three days after PVE, we found that the liver volume increase in OCA group is close to 30%, much higher than 25% in the control group. And also at day seven, the liver volume increase in the OCA group is higher than the control group. The research question of this study is what are the molecular pathways by which OCA accelerates liver growth after portal vein embolization? We assessed uh, the total basal levels in figure A. We found that the serum total basal levels in OCA group tended to be normalized faster than the control group. In figure B, we found that the, in the non 
embolize the liver loop, the liver total bus levels is, is lower in OC group than the control group, indicating that the OC improved basal homeostasis. We also include the patients undergoing PVE to assess the influence of color stasis on the hypertrophy of the future liver remnant. We included the patients with colorectal liver metastasis or peripheral carcinoma. The liver segment two and three were taken as the future liver remnant. We selected the, the, liver, uh, the segment two and three on each CT, CT scan and then calculate the future, uh, uh, the, the future liver remnant volume in the liver uh, analysis system. When comparing patients with colorectal liver metastasis uh, to patients with peripheral clan carcinoma, we find that the degree of hypertrophy was similar between two groups. When comparing the patients with hyperbilirubinemia to patients without hyperbilirubinemia in peripheral clan carcinoma, we find that the degree of hypertrophy was was still comparable between two groups, indicating that there's no influence of color status on the hypertrophy of the future liver remnant. In part three, we, we studied the, the contribution of basalt FG F19 to the beneficial effect of chimerine fueling in patients with intestinophilia. Chimerine fusion is an internal nutrition technique which can re-establish the continuity of small intestine. Previous study found that chimerine fueling can restore the intestinal absorptive function and reverse the liver injury, but uh, the mechanisms remain, uh, remain unknown. Our research question is, does the basalt FG F19 axis contributes to the beneficial effect of chimerine fusion. To this end, we collected the samples at three days before chimerine fusion and uh, different time points after chimerine fusion. First, we studied the effect of chimerine fusion on the basalt FG F19 signaling. In figures, the X axis is the time after start of chimerine fusion, the y axis is the molecule levels. In figure eight, we found that the total bus levels uh, did not change significantly during the course of chimerine fusion. In figure B, we found that the FG F19 level is increased after chimerine fusion with a peak at uh, uh, D D7. C4 is a blind mark of basalt uh, synthesis. In line with elevated uh, FG F19 levels, C4 levels are decreased uh, after chimerine fusion, indicating the restored basalt FG F19 signaling by the chimerine fusion. Then we started the effect of chimerine fusion on the gut liver health. In the figure A, citrulline is a uh, intestinal absorptive function marker. Citrine levels are increased after chimerine fusion and were normal in all patients at five weeks after chimerine fusion. In figure B, ALP is a liver injury marker. The after chimerine fusion, the ALP levels decreased, indicating that the chimerine fusion improved the gut liver health. Conclusions. Most available evidence have high risk of death about the significance and preferred route of preoperative berry drainage in peripheral clan carcinoma. OCA improved the basalt homeostasis, which partly contributed to accelerate hypertrophy of the non embolized liver lobe in rabbits. There was no influence of color stasis on the hypertrophy of the future liver remnant 
in patients undergoing protovin and embolization. Beneficial effects of chemical infusion are partly mediated by the recovery of the basalt F19 axis in intestinophilia patients with a temporary double enterostomy. Thank you very much, Mr. Chang, for your clear presentation. I think we have now time for questioning. And I officially would like to open the, your, the, the questioning by the uh, member and basically the chair of your assessment committee, Professor Van Schoten from Maastricht University. And he is affiliated as professor in genetic toxicology. And I would like to give him the word. Thank you so much. Um, respected candidates, compliments for the nice piece of work. I really liked your thesis and I've read it with uh, much pleasure. My background is in molecular toxicology and I have learned again a lot about the liver, which is for us also a very important organ. And I knew that all salts are needed in the body to help break down uh, fats and aid in the digestion and also to el eliminate the uh, toxins. But I never realized that they are also crucially important for liver generation and for cell proliferation. So just to start with the basic question, um, what animal and clinical observations form the basis for the concept that bowel salts are involved in liver generation, degeneration? Highly esteemed opponent, thank you for your question. Uh, for, for the for the role uh, of basalt uh, in the liver region, uh, regeneration, and uh, uh, for the uh, there are the surgical uh, settings for the mo model uh, for the mass model, uh, the the basalt uh, can can stimulate uh, the liver growth in the uh, mass with the uh, partial hepatectomy, uh, mm -hmm. in the mass received uh, the 70% of uh, uh, the, uh, the partial liver resection. And uh, the, if uh, it is in this model, the, F, if the FXR is mm -hmm. uh, knocked out, then the basalt cannot uh, uh, stimulate the liver uh, regeneration. So the, the basalt FXR uh, signaling is, is important for the liver regeneration in this uh, surgical uh, mass model. And uh, also in uh, another model, which is a uh, uh, non-surgical model, but, uh, the, uh, but uh, the mice with uh, the product deletion, it, it is the color static model. We, we found that uh, the uh, the OCA, the FXR agonist, can, uh, can stimulate uh, the liver growth before okay. the, uh, the liver resection. Okay, so in these uh, two knockout mice models, um, uh, what about the mortality after hepatectomy in these two models? Uh, 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 is the mortality the same? If, uh, uh, if I understand uh, correctly, do you mean that uh, the, the mechanism between... between yes, us? yes. Because uh, in one model, the, uh, the mortality is uh, a bit higher than the other. And, and, and what's the mechanism behind that? Uh, the, uh, the mortality in, uh, in the... Uh, in the my model uh, re, uh, receiving the o, o, uh, without the o, OC is uh, close to the seventy percent. So, okay. So the mortality is very high if the if the liver regeneration is is uh, impaired. But uh, if but uh, when the mice is treated with uh, the basalt and then the mortality is, is, is lower, close to the seven, uh, close to the 25%. So the mortality is, 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 is 
decreased uh, significantly if uh, they received uh, the bus lot. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So, so you have then this evidence from these um, models, and and in chapter three of your thesis, you try to establish an uh, own model, an uh, ex vivo model with uh, precision cut liver slices, and although you show that these uh, liver slices are metabolically competent because they have uh, cytochrome P450 activity, you could not uh, study your bile salt signaling. And can you very shortly explain what was the problem here that you could not see that? Thank you for your question. Uh, we did uh, the liver slice model with aim to assess the FG F19 in the liver regeneration, but uh, we find that the the readout of FG F19 uh, is undetectable. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, we also find that many uh, gene expression of FG F19 or FXR related genes is is, is declined uh, during the culture of liver, liver size. So the, the problem I think is, is, is we cannot uh, find a suitable readout of FG F19 and we cannot, uh, we, we cannot judge the effect of FG F19. Maybe the, uh, maybe the culture condition Need mm -hmm. to be harmonized to maintain the uh, de uh, deficient uh, phenotype of uh, hepatocytes, and uh, also the uh, the liver uh, the condition of the liver tissue uh, should should be op optimal because we didn't uh, uh, assess the histological features. Of of the uh, the liver tissue, and maybe some some uh, some patients have received the ch ch chemotherapy, and uh, of course this can uh, affect the the liver tissue condition. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the, this condition we need to consider. Yeah, because it would be very helpful to have such a model to study molecular mechanisms. Yeah. And as I understand for you from your answer, there is still some hope that you could establish this such a model by improvements. Uh, thank you so much. I'm very happy with your questions and I'm giving the word back to the pro-rector. Thank you very much, Professor van Schoten. The opposition will be followed by Dr. Bemermans. He was also a member of your assessment committee. And he is also affiliated with our Master University Center. And I would like to give him the word, Dr. Bemermans. Dear candidate, um, thank you for giving the opportunity to uh, read this impressive uh, thesis. Uh, as an oncological HPB surgeon, I'm mostly interested, of course, in liver growth and acceleration of growth before the hepatectomy. And uh, my my question is also about that mechanism. And in chapter four, you describe the uh, FXR effects on the livers. And it has been described here in an experimental model in rabbits. Um, you mentioned also some human data. My question is concerning the, the in human data, there, are, there, has been some, there have been some trials on sclerosi uh, sclerosing cholangitis cirrhosis and steatohepatitis. Do you have any idea if there are also already trials on normal livers? And secondly, um, if there are, is that the thing we have to do now in human surgery? Just give the patients FXR before the operation? Secondly, um, you also mentioned there's an essential additional step would be the demonstration of lack of effects of um, the FXR on tumor progression in the embolized liver. Uh, could you speculate if there is a there would be a difference between the cholangiocarcinoma or colorectal metastasis and the effects of FXR on that liver? Please. 
esteemed opponent, thank you for your question. For your first question, uh, now, I, uh, based on my knowledge, uh, there are no uh, prospective study to assess the uh, the influence of uh, PBE on the uh, on the liver liver growth, but there are many retrospective study assessed uh, the uh, the influence of PBE on the liver liver growth. But uh, but uh, mm, all these patients are uh, are with uh, the uh, the uh, the liver tumor. Uh, the patients with uh, uh, for example, in patients with uh, pericular crunch carcinoma, the liver is uh, uh, the uh, the liver is the uh, color cystic or have uh, uh, fibrosis, and uh, for the patients with uh, col colorectal liver metastasis, uh, most of patients have already received the chemotherapy already. So, so, uh, so the liver is a uh, not the normal liver. Uh, 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 we want to assess the uh, the influence of PVE on the liver hyper uh, liver hypertrophy in the clinical patients. But uh, uh, of course, in clinical patients, it's 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 very hard to uh, find the um, the normal uh, liver condition when they received uh, the per, uh, the PVE. So it's um, now there are I uh, uh, I uh, for me I didn't find uh, the study that uh, they they assessed uh, the uh, the the influence of PVE on the normal the liver tissue. And uh, for the second question, you mentioned that. Uh, are there any uh, studies in which the FXR uh, against the uh, application in the clinical study? Yes, uh, I would say uh, yes. Now there are uh, there are many studies in which uh, the FXR against OCA is uh, is is uh, used for the treatment. Uh, 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 patients with uh, the color cystitis, uh, for example, the primary biliary conjectis, and uh, also the patients with NASH, and they found that uh, the FXR agonist uh, can improve the uh, the liver histological features and also can uh, improve the liver injury marker, for example, the ARP and the GGT. Uh, and also the uh, the OCA can uh, can increase the FG F19 levels in these patients to inhibit uh, the the uh, the basal synthesis. And you mentioned that if if uh, uh, the uh, we need to address the the liver progression by the XR and uh, yes and uh, this is uh, one concern we need to uh, take into account when we want when we would like to use the uh, the OCA in patients uh, and went to the PVE uh, for for, um, uh, for now uh, for my knowledge I didn't uh, find the literature that uh, assess the uh, assess the uh, the effect OCA on the liver uh, tumor uh, on the liver tumor progression in uh, in the rabbit uh, uh, or mice model with PVE and uh, if 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 uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, the if the effect is different between the correct liver mortal uh, mortality and uh, the parochial chondro carcinoma. And I would say that uh, because the the tumor features is uh, different between these two types of cancer, um, mm, I I think the 
uh, the OCA will be uh, uh, will have different uh, uh, effects on the progression of uh, colorectal or conjugate because the the cell uh, cell origin is different between two types of tumor and uh, also uh, the progression and uh, the survival is different between two types of tumor. I think uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, the, it will have different uh, uh, effects between these two types okay. of tumor. Thank you very much. I'm very satisfied with this answer and I will go give the word back to the prorector. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bebermans. We have to proceed very nicely and we have to proceed with uh, Professor Kramer. He was also a member of your assessment committee and he is affiliated as professor of molecular tumor biology at the uh, Aachen University. And I would like to give him the word, Professor Kramer. Thank you very much, Mr. Prorector. Dear candidate, thank you very much for this presentation and for giving me the chance to read your thesis, which I enjoyed uh, very much. So congratulations on this nice work uh, together with Frank and Steven. Um, just some basic questions on cholesterol, maybe to start. Did you ever think about the word cholesterol? Do you know what that means? Did you look it up? Uh, highly esteemed opponent, thank you for your question. The cholesterol is, uh, is a part of the lipid uh, metabolism and uh, the, uh, the liver and metabolize the cholesterol into the uh, into the basalt uh, by the uh, by the expression of sub a one the sub a one is a, a limited uh, enzyme that uh, control the uh, the basalt uh, synthesis and uh, if 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 uh, the cholesterol is, is too high then the patient have uh, will have blood, uh, the high blood level of lipids and then will have uh, high risk of uh, cardiovascular disease or other disease. So in your um, opinion, do you think uh, cholesterol is something very important for your the biology background you come from for the body? Yes, I, yeah, yes, I think uh, the cholesterol is uh, important. Uh, and uh, sorry, if you talk to your colleagues from cardiology, do they agree that cholesterol is very important? Uh, uh, the cholesterol is uh, it's, 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 it's not, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, if the cholesterol level are very high, then the patient will have a high risk of uh, the cardiovascular disease. So the cholesterol is, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a uh, uh, harmful uh, molecule of body. <clears throat> and you probably know that there are very potent medications that people can use to interfere with cholesterol biosynthesis, right? Yes. And um, do you know side effects of these? Because you are a doctor and have you heard of the side effects of these drugs? Uh, thank you for your question. The uh, the side effect of uh, cholesterol is the uh, uh, cholesterol treatment will be the, uh, uh, in my opinion, the drugs will also uh, affect uh, the uh, affect uh, uh, the other uh, function of the um, energy metabolism. And, uh, do, you, do you know an organ that has a lot of fat that is very important for your body that that has a lot of fat and a lot of cholesterol one organ um, that uh, you use right now very you use it right now very extensively for thinking uh, um, uh, you mean the you mean the uh, the uh, the drug for the treatment of uh, no no I mean an organ that has a lot of fat and that you use right now for thinking is the organ in your head. Uh, you mean the liver? 
I know that liver is the center of your world now after this five years of PhD, and I understand, but the, you use your brain now, right, for thinking. Your brain. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brain, brain, brain. So I had a friend in psychiatry and he, his email address was brain is mostly fat at yahoo.com. So the brain has a lot of fat and some of these drugs that interfere with cholesterol, they can cause thinking problems, cognitive impairment, you know? Have you heard of this before? Mm, sorry. Okay. So I think it's just important for you to keep in mind that the cholesterol that you studied now with respect to biosalts is also very important Uh, in other um, biological pathways in the body, right? Yes. It's also very important for hormone synthesis, steroid hormones, and partly is also important for vitamin D synthesis, right? Yes. Okay, so I think it's important to keep in mind. Uh, one thing that struck me is because of the widespread use of these statins to lower cholesterol, does this, inter I, I actually don't know, so I'm asking you because I'm interested Does this interfere at any point with the ability of the body to synthesize bile acids? Is this possible? Have you heard of this before? Uh, if I understand correctly, uh, you mean the, uh, the, uh, the cholesterol uh, molecules will affect the bile salt. Uh, so you, have, you know that bile salts are made from cholesterol. Yes. Yeah. And you have patients now, a lot of patients, the majority in some countries that take cholesterol re reducing drugs. Yeah. So yeah. now my question is, does this, you have patients that reduce, they have reduced cholesterol because they take drugs. Do they also show, you know, disbalances in the bile salt uh, synthesis or axis? Do you, have you heard of this? Mm -hmm. Uh, in my opinion, if, if they receive the drugs uh, uh, decreasing the cholesterol, um, I, uh, I guess the basal acids will, because uh, the drug, drugs have different effects. If the drugs decrease the cholesterol at the early uh, steps of cholesterol uh, formation, then the I think the busted levels were also decreased if they, if they uh, received this drug. Hey, that will be a first good research project for you when you go back to China to look into this. Yeah, yes. it's, a, it's a good point. <laughs> And uh, do I have one more minute or not? You have one more minute. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pro Rector. Um, the very nice technique of the precision cut liver slices. Can you just in 20 seconds tell us The method, explain to us how this works, how you did this. Uh, yes, uh, uh, first we got uh, the fresh uh, resected uh, liver tissue in the op operation uh, room by the surgeon, and then we put uh, the liver tissue into the code UW surgeon, and then immediately tra uh, transform it uh, to the lab, and then we make uh, the cross uh, using the punch, uh, and then Put, uh, put uh, the, the liver, uh, liver cross into the sensor machine. Uh, the sensor machine can automatically to, to, to cut the cross uh, into the sizes. The sizes uh, are about uh, 250 micro, uh, microliter. And then we, after we get the sufficient uh, the sizes, and then we put uh, 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 and then we uh, put uh, the sizes in, into the uh, incubator for one hour pre-incubation. And after one hour pre-incubation, then we refresh the, the medium. And then at the, the medium with the di different uh, test uh, condition, and then continue to, to culture and then collect uh, the, the liver size at a different time, time point uh, for, the, uh, for the following Uh, 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 for the following te tests. You know the, the name I of this machine? Sorry, sorry Professor Kama, I have to interrupt. Okay. Um, basically, Thank you. Basically, a Dutch minute is almost similar to a German minute. <laughs> so basically, we have to keep it on time. Anyway, we have to proceed. And I would like to welcome Dr. Wanten. He was also a member of your assessment committee. 
He has an expertise in intestinal failure and is affiliated with the Radboud University Medical Center. And I would like to thank him that he likes to join. I give him the word. Thank you, Prorector. Uh, respected candidate, first of all, I want to congratulate you and your well-known team in Maastricht on finishing this uh, thesis. It really has become an excellent piece of work and uh, it has significant relevance for the field. Uh, we as Intestinal Failure Union in Nijmegen have previously had the privilege to join your team uh, together with Kieran Kulfat, and I perfectly fits in the tradition of the Department of Surgery in Maastricht of exploring new avenues of thinking when it comes to uh, intestinal and hepatobiliary function in uh, relation to disease and nutrition. Now, my main task today is not only to praise you, but rather to shake your tree of confidence a bit, so to speak. And I would like to start with a question, I will not surprise you on chapter six, where when I look at the table uh, one on page 174, you state that you included 12 patients suffering from intestinal failure. And you mention also the term intestinal failure in the title of your manuscript. Now, IF implies that patients by definition require intravenous support of fluids and or nutrition to maintain their health. Yet, if I look at the table, I see that only 10 of these patients were on PN or intravenous support. Can you explain this? Esteemed opponent, thank you for your question. Uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, 10 of uh, 12 patients are the parental nutrition uh, dependence, uh, but, uh, but in principle, this, uh, this all patients have, uh, have a high, uh, have high, uh, uh, have high the, uh, stomach output and have high, uh, uh, have uh, um, uh, have high level of cyclin, so in principle they should uh, be treated with the par uh, parental nutrition. Uh, but uh, uh, I um, I think two patients did not uh, uh, receive the, the parental nutrition because uh, uh, they uh, because they received the, the uh, re, uh, because they also received the, some uh, some nutrition by the um, by the by the uh, by the uh, by the by tra transforming the uh, the nutrition into the uh, distal small intestine mm -hmm. but, uh, but in principle, uh, they, uh, they should treat it, uh, they should be treated with the parental, uh, parental nutrition. Are you, but you would agree that if you adhere to the rules that strictly taken, these were not IF patients? If, 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 uh, if I understand correctly, uh, you mean that uh, if, if... They had no intravenous support at that point. If... Uh, uh, Excluded these two patients. Yes, but if you excluded these two patients, would have had any influence on the results that you obtained in the remaining ten patients? Uh, I think uh, uh, even if we excluded these two patients, the uh, the uh, the findings of our study will uh, will not uh, will not change because because uh, um, because the our our study assessed the uh, the effect of chemical fusion on the basalt FG F nineteen axis and uh, uh, in our in our cohort the after chemical fusion the FG uh, uh, the uh, before chemical fusion all the patients have high uh, high C uh, C four levels and lower FG F nineteen levels and after chemical fusion the FG F19 level is increased and the C4 level is decreased. And uh, I think, uh, and I think the main conclusion of our study will not change because we observe the obverse, uh, the 
the effect of chemical fueling on the biosphere FG F19 signaling. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the conclusion will not change. Yeah. What struck me in uh, your study in chapter six, and it goes somewhat back to the um, uh, to the previous uh, opponent and getting back to the cholesterol is that what I missed somewhat in the description of your study is the fact that these patients re received parental nutrition with a lipid as part of the PN formulation. And I would consider this relevant because it has been shown that in plants where, especially in soybean oil, you found that, uh, that that's part of most lipid emulsions. And there we find the vegetable form of cholesterol, so to speak, in the form of phytosterols, um, for instance, campesterol, cytosterol, are part of these lipid formulations. And it has been shown previously that these may play a role in the development of parental nutrition-associated liver disease and cholestasis by inhibiting the action of FXR and lowering thus FGF19, uh, which might lead so to cholestasis and liver toxicity. Um, have you considered this in your study, or can you comment on this? If I understand correctly, you mean that the uh, the uh, the chemical fueling and uh, the uh, the effect chemical fueling on the intestinal feeder associated liver disease. Yes, um, yeah, so there might there might already already be a, apart from the kindly infusion and the effect that you obtained and observed, uh, there might already be an effect beforehand because of the lipids that are present in the PN formulation. So that obscures your model. That would be my suggestion. Would you agree on that? Mm. I uh, I think uh, the yes yes I uh, I agree with you the after coming fueling the uh, the the microbiota is 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 uh, is, uh, is changed it's because of the uh, before coming fueling the uh, the bac bac bacteria is over it's overgrows uh, into the in intestine and after coming fueling the uh, it will uh, the bus will, uh will interact with the microbiota and uh, then and uh, then the intestinal inflammation is is is, is improved and uh, then the translocation of the microbiota or the the product of bacteria to the liver and uh, will be uh, will be improved so so the so the uh, uh, so this can also lead to the improved uh, the uh, the liver uh, liver function and uh, also improve the intestinal feeding associated liver disease. Okay, do I still have time for one question? I'm very sorry about this. No, there's no time left over. I thank you for your answers, and I can give back the word to the pro-rector. Thank you very much. The opposition will be continued by Professor Stassen. He is involved as a chair of the Department of Colorectal Surgery at our Master University Center Plus, and I would like to give him the word. Professor Stassen. Thank you, Mr. Prorector. And dear candidate, dear candidate Chang, I'm uh, honored that I can talk to you, meet you, and I want to congratulate you and your whole team on performing such excellent research. Um, yeah, indeed, I was introduced as a colorectal surgeon, so it will not surprise you that I also want to ask you something on chapter six, because all this liver surgery research is uh, too difficult for me. Um, you tell us about the effect of chyme Reinfusion and its positive effects on bile salt metabolism, but also other positive effects. Uh, increase in citrulline, which you call restoration of intestinal function. There is a positive effect 
of albumin, and you call that restoration of nutrition. And there's a decrease of abnormal liver tests, which you call amelioration, improvement of liver injury. All these positive effects, are these just due to the restoration of the bile salt metabolism? Or is there more in chyme and in chyme reinfusion? Are there more factors, more substances which cause these positive effects? Can you tell me something on that? Highly esteemed opponent, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, this is a, a very question uh, uh, because there are many different molecules in the chyme, uh, of course, including the, uh, the bastard and uh, also the other lipids and also the, uh, the, pro uh, uh, the protein secreted by the liver and also by the pancreas and, uh, uh, and also uh, secreted by the gallbladder. Um, uh, I think uh, there are also some uh, molecules that can, uh, that, can, uh, that can contribute to the improved uh, uh, intestinal function and uh, the liver function. And uh, uh, I think uh, for, uh, for one of these, uh, the, the gut microbiota, maybe one, maybe another uh, factor that contribute to, to the uh, to the improved uh, uh, gut liver health. Uh, for example, the, uh, the if uh, the uh, because the gut microbiota, if 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 the gut uh, microbiota is over over growth and it can induce the uh, the intestinal inflammation and they will destroy the in uh, integrate of uh, the intestinal and uh, also will produce the uh, the uh, pro products such as the LPS and also other pro products they can uh, uh, they can uh, translocate uh, to the liver to in, uh, to induce the cholestasis and or uh, fibrosis and uh, or cirrhosis and uh, even the end stage of liver di di disease. And uh, I think uh, uh, the, uh, the gut microbiota is uh, another main uh, factor that affects uh, uh, the beneficial of uh, chemical fusion. Yeah, well, thank you for your answer indeed. In one of your conclusions, you said that the um, bile salt or the restoration of the bile salt metabolism was in part the cause of all these improvements. And indeed, you now say the same. So I do agree to that. Um, well, um, I want to take you to page 172. That is the statistical analysis. But I want to ask you not something on the statistics. But on this page, you tell us that one patient was excluded because he already received enteral nutrition as an enterocleisis into the downstream small bowel before starting the protocol. Can you tell me why was this patient excluded? What is the effect, you think, of the downstream enteral nutrition that probably interferes with your chyme reinfusion. Uh, Mr. Uh, Candidate, can you give a short answer? Uh, uh, thank you for your question. And uh, I think uh, uh, because this patient have received the uh, nutrition, uh, the inter-nutrition and uh, chyme reinfusion is also an inter-nutrition and uh, if, if uh, uh, the treatment of this, this patient will induce a uh, co-founder for the 
uh, for the effect of chemical chemical fuel in, if we include this patient because uh, uh, after the after receiving the inter nutrition the uh, the faster to FG F19 levels will be affected by this uh, by this inter nutrition and this will affect the uh, the uh, the effect of chemical fueling. So this uh, it will be a co-founder for for our study. Well, thank you for your answer. You're here. We have to finish the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Stassen. And I would like to continue the opposition with uh, Dr. Van Gholen. So Dr. Van Gholen is an expertise in gastroenterology and hepatology. He is from the Haaglanden uh, Medical Center. I would like to welcome him and I would like to gladly give him the final words. Professor of Dr. Sorry, Van Gholen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Prorector, and of course, thank you for the for the invitation. Um, dear candidate, I would also like to congratulate you, of course, on an uh, excellent thesis. It was a very interesting read, a captivating read. Um, and the congratulations, of course, always uh, also extend to your supervisory team. Um, to no surprise, I would also like to focus on chapter four, in which you use a rabbit model of portal vein embolization uh, and OCA to try to boost the effects of uh, PVE on uh, liver regeneration. And if you look at page 106 in your introduction, you postulate that a transient elevation in serum bile salts is a trigger or a signal to increase liver mass. And with that statement, you refer to an old stu study from uh, Thomas von Gulik's laboratory who showed this uh, association between serum bile salt increase and liver growth after PV. And if you look at your own data in figure 1A, I believe, then you can see that in the rabbits treated with OCA, so the rabbits that showed more liver growth after PV than the untreated rabbits, you see that the serum bile salts level were, levels were not higher. They were similar or even a bit lower so can you comment on how you explain that serum bile salts trigger an increase in liver mass? You see, if you treat them with OCA, that the liver grows faster, but the serum bile salts aren't higher. Esteemed opponent, uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I read uh, the, uh, the article you mentioned that the, the bile salt level is a, it's a, it's a positively correlated uh, the liver the liver uh, hypertrophy after PVE. And but in our study, we found that uh, the uh, serum to bus level in OCA is lower than the control group in the rabbits. And uh, I think uh, the difference between these two studies is uh, the, uh, it's the uh, treatment of OCA. Uh, in, our, in our study, the OCA can inhibit uh, the uh, hepatic uh, bus Synthesis. So after PVE, the bath level is, is, is increased in control group or in uh, and in uh, OC group, but the OC can inhibit the bath water synthesis. So, uh, uh, so the um, so the the total bath level is, is, is should be uh, lower in the OC group because. Uh, the treatment effect of uh, OCA is to inhibit the bastard synthesis. And in the previous study, you mentioned that uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, the bastard level uh, predicts uh, the liver hy hypertrophy. Uh, in that model, the, the, uh, there's no OCA treatment in that model. And uh, um, I, uh, I, I think the uh, uh, and also, uh, 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 the rabbits uh, didn't uh, 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 only receive the, the PVE and didn't uh, receive the other drugs. So, okay. uh, so the uh, the password can can be used as a marker for yeah. the for the liver hypertrophy. But we would agree that if you treat rabbits with OCA, then the bile salt production is down, and the bile salt serum levels are also down. So would you still agree that you need 
a serum peak in total bile salts to trigger liver growth? Or is that maybe something we, that we made a, a wrong postulation 10 years ago? Uh, if I understand correctly, uh, you mean the, in, the, in the previous study, you, uh, you should use the total bile salt peak level. Mm -hmm. Would you would you want a high peak or a low peak or no peak to trigger liver growth? Uh, for the for the higher liver growth and uh, I think the lower peak levels of serum to the basal is is better. Okay, we agree. Fine. Um, for the next question, I would like to move to Figure Five of the same uh, chapter, and in this figure, you show clearly that uh, in the rabbits treated with OCA. You see that CDC 25B is higher in panel B, and you also see a correlation between this marker and markers for liver growth or hepatocyte proliferation, the key 67, and also the liver volume increase of the non-embolized lobes. And what I would like to ask you is, is this effect in the OCA group mediated by stimulation of FXR in the liver or mediated by stimulation of FXR in the intestines? And why do you think it's either of the two? Um, thank you for your question. I think uh, the uh, the liver growth is that uh, by the OCA, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's mediated uh, by the intestines and also. Uh, Ora est is the final word, Mr. Cheng, and the time appointed officially for defending your thesis has now passed. So basically you can relax now, okay? The degree committee will now withdraw to discuss the quality of your thesis, but in particular, the way you have defended your thesis this afternoon. I progressed you and your virtual committee and company await the results of deliberation and our return. And I would like to ask Mr. Peters to put us over.
Look, are we all in? Yes, you are, Mr. Borak. Because I've got a different screen with you as main screen. That's a different one. Okay. I'm looking for Mr. Chung too. Let me see if he is well. Yes. Mr. Chung, the degree committee here present online has assessed the quality of your thesis and in particular, the way you have defended the thesis, your thesis this afternoon. In view of its positive verdict and taking into account your previous qualifications, the degree committee has decided to grant you the title and the degree of doctor. Professor Alder Dumming is authorized to confer upon you this academic distinction in accordance with Dutch university custom. And I invite your supervisor now to take the floor with his duties. Professor Alder Dumming, I give you the word. Do you promise to work in accordance with the principles of scientific integrity at all times, to be careful and honest, transparent, independent, and responsible? Yes, I promise. By the authority vested in us by law and in conformity with the decision of the committee here present online, I hereby confer upon you, Sing Rai Xiang, the degree of doctor and grant you all the rights attached by custom and law, as evidence of this, you will soon receive the degree certificate signed by the rector, the secretary, and the supervisor affixed with the official seal of the university, shown here by the beadle. I think it's a possibility now to applaud the candidate. I give the word to the supervisor to give a laudatio to the candidate. Yes, thank you, Mr. Prorector. So Dr. Xiang, Xing Wai, Dia Xing Wai. Um, it's a privilege to be the first to uh, address the title Dr. Sheng and, and be very proud on your achievement. And I think it's remarkable what you did. Eh? You, you're a very ambitious, very focused student. Um, and you managed to, to finish your PhD in four years, in five days, but really in four days, which is, is exceptionally, uh, exceptionally fast, certainly in a, in a department uh, in which we try to do translational research, in which you not only are educated to do uh, you know, lab-based research, but you, we also try to educate young surgeons to be, or scientists to try to use the human situation to do research in. and then four years, it's really, you know, a achievement. So congratulations on that. Um, and also congratulations for being able to push the assessment committee to achieve that on this day, because you had a good reason to do so as you have, you know, been accepted as the training post in Sun Chat Sen University. Uh, and, it's, uh, um, and then to start your, trainical, uh, your training as a surgeon in a memorial hospital there in Ganzhou. Um, and you already had accepted the post now almost three quarters of a year ago by saying to the boss there, listen, I can finish my PhD. I will arrive there on the 1st of January, 1st of January with my PhD. Um, and it really took some pressure to achieve that. And that's the reason we do it on Zoom, because otherwise, you know, with two times a guarantee in the next couple of months, you will not have been able to do so. Um, and then what I really like is that your new home is a very ambitious university. Uh, it's named after the founding father of modern China, Sun Yat-sen, uh, who once studied there. And if you look at the website, and they even have now ongoing publications in nature in which they try to attract the best talents, it's going to be a very nice environment in which they really push this translational research and they are going to focus on, you know, proteomics, inflammation and metabolism. So really skill sets that you that you learned here in mastery. And then I, I think it's good to know for the audience that the first time that you approached it uh, was in November 2016 by an email request to perform research at our group and with the request to Frank Schaap and myself um, uh, to, to help you with applying for the CSC scholarship. And it's impressive to see that your CV at that time already contained 11 publications in which six you were first author, that within five years, after the first email, which is actually a year, five years ago now exactly, that you are now standing here with a doctor degree. 
The interesting bit about your email and your CV is that um, it showed that you were honored as a student leader for 2010, 2014 in, in the medical uh, students. And of course, you know, I receive sometimes these emails and I, I, it's, I find it very difficult to judge the quality and the person behind these emails. So I contacted my Chinese spy, Yun Fan Cao, the first CSC student that I supervised and who's now almost a, a, a big HPV surgeon in Wuhan. Um, and he judged your CV very positively, especially the fact that you were a student leader. And according to him, a student leader is generally more outgoing, easy, socially interactive uh, type of Chinese students. And he was really, really um, spot on. I think um, that is remarkable knowing the, the, the difficulty in language. You know, I'm completely not able to speak Chinese, so I've got a lot of um, time for Chinese students to learn English and, uh, and you know, um, and, and not even uh, uh, Dutch, but, 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 but even be able to manage the language and being able to, to, to perform difficult tasks like, you know, answering questions during your opposition. I find it very, very impressive. Um, but you showed that you were you know, very social, you integrated uh, very, uh, very well, um, and you, you managed the lab tech needs. Being a medical student, you know, were not able to do even the pipetting we had to learn uh, to you. But I think after four years, you mastered all the basic skills for molecular biology techniques, and you were actually the first one that produced um, you know, successful um, precision cut liver slice experiments from humans in our lab which I think is very is, 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 is something uh, that uh, we should applaud uh, to you. Um, uh, it was really good to see that you also managed the multiple difficulties in, 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 in performing such a difficult experiment because you had to integrate with the patient, you had to integrate with the OR staff, integrate with the, with the surgeons, integrate with the lab technicians, go to the pathologist, um, and, 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 and be able to manage that yourself within the two years after arriving uh, from China in the Netherlands. So I really uh, would like to express uh, our gratitude of Frank and myself that you were able to show and do it by yourself. And I think, um, you know, your whole thesis is an example of translational research. Uh, you managed to do statistical uh, research. Um, you, you managed to do systematic um, uh, a reviews and uh, even systematic reviews of systematic reviews with top-notch scientists. You manage basic scientific um, uh, skills in the lab, uh, but also uh, being able to translate that into humans. And if you can perform that same translational research attitude in um, uh, in your new environment in Gangsu, you know, knowing with a, a hospital of almost ten thousand patients, you know, this will, will be a boost for translational medicine. And I would be very, very happy to support you in doing so and be more than glad in, um, in, in, in giving you advice from a distance or even to visit you. So again, uh, Sing Rai, it's an, it's an honor. It's an honor to have you, know, have, you have in my team together with Frank and, and, and see how you matured. Um, and I wish you all the best. I hope that we can drink a good glass of champagne in the afternoon, not too much as you did with the PhD event of your girlfriend last week, because that will mean that you have the hangover tomorrow, but we will certainly enjoy it in this afternoon. I wish you the best, and for me, it was a pleasure to work with you. We can applause now. Thank you very much. So dear Dr. Chung, I think that feels uh, quite well if we speak about Dr. Chung. I also would like to, I also would like to congratulate you on behalf of the Board of Deans of Maastricht University. I congratulate you and with my congratulations and also would like to bring it virtually further to the rest of your family who might be present in the online systems. I think you did a great job. Uh, Professor Alderdamink just mentioned before that you finished not exactly on time, but it was five days too late, but that's really a minor thing. I'm very pleased also, again, to see one of our CSC students finishing and going back to China. And like I mentioned before already to, to you and to others, you will be in the future, hopefully, one of our ambassadors in China, in which we like to bring some European students to learn also uh, what, how Chinese medicine 
how a Chinese hospital is winning. So really we're going to use you. Saying this, I would like to wish you a nice day. I, this is an important day for you, the day in which you will shine today. And it looks like also literally to this. And by that, I'm going to close officially this online ceremony using my hammer, as you can see over here. And I would say this ceremony is now officially ended. Thank you very much. And. Okay.